Hello my good friends, today it's Roger once again and I am going to start into the atomic theory which is electron flood theory. I'm going to explain it in great detail and I am at this point absolutely certain it's correct and it completely changes everything in physics. Now, there's not a physicist on the planet that can tell me how hydrogen works. Not None. Zero. Zero. If you can come with to me about hydrogen and explain to me how one gigantic proton attracts one tiny little electron and keeps it away from itself without sucking it in it, you know I mean you can come up with all the dark spooky entangled nonsense you want it does not work I have the theory that does work and I want somebody to challenge it all right this is really very simple H1, 1H hydrogen, that's the most basic hydrogen. All right. Let's start with that, because that's, that's where we have to start, right at the beginning. I'm going to challenge any physicist on the planet, anybody that's breathing oxygen, to talk to me about this and to confront what I'm saying, because what I'm saying is correct. Now, what's in the hydrogen th the nucleus? The theory is one big proton, one tiny electron. Absolutely not. Electron flood theory claims that in those particles, in every atom, there is only a couple of particles. Right? There's only the upspin and the downspin electrons. And that's what they are. There's an electron up and there's a positron down. They're the same weights, the same charges, only they're opposite. Now, so what does that mean to a hydrogen nucleus? It means that there is 1837 particles in that nucleus. All right? And it does weigh out. Everything weighs out exactly what I'm talking about. There's no question. It's, it's, it weighs out correctly. Now, so we have one gigantic proton and in that gigantic proton, there's 1,837 particles, of which 918, which is half, approximately, are positive. Then there's 1,919 negatives. And what does that mean? Why is there one more negative? That negative keeps the one additional negative, that is the electron spinning around in the cloud, right there, it keeps that electron away from the nucleus, because the nucleus has one additional of those, it pushes it away. It has 918 of these, which pulls it in, because that's a negative. These positives want that. This one positive negative says, no, you can't come all the way in. You could stay out there. That's okay. And I'm going to show you this in a very simple toy. It's called a magnet, uh, attractive beam magnet. I'll show you that in a second. Now, these particles all weigh 0.0054827 atomic mass units. And if you multiply that number times 1838, which is the total number of particles in the hydrogen, 1837 in the core, there's one floating around, it's 1838 times that number is the weight of one hydrogen. That's what it weighs. This is the negative ones. It's the upspin and the downspin. I mean, the uh, it's the up and there's a positive and a negative. So this is the upspin. This is the exact same particle. I can't see any difference whatsoever. Only it's tips upside down. But if you tipped it up right side up, it wouldn't matter. It's still spinning backwards. Whatever the direction is, I don't think it has any. In other words, this one is attached to that. That's what makes a photon. And these two together are, are, are going to attach together until you reach what's called um, resonance. And at, at 1836 of these little bitty magnetic particles, and that's what's in the core of every proton, at 1836 of these, boom, it says, okay, I'm all right. You add a couple more in here, and I'm not going to be stable. I'm going to start doing this stuff, these isotopes. I'm going to say, well, I got extra this, I got extra that, I'm not supposed to have it. Well, you're an isotope. You shouldn't have all that. 1836 is where you're stable. Don't go to 1810, 1890, and you're not going to be stable. You're going to be radioactive. You're going to fall apart. All right, now let's see the tractor beam magnet. All right, this is Latham's crazy machines. What he's doing is he's taking a brass ring, and he's got a bunch of negatives in there and he's got a, a positive core going into the middle of it all right so when he puts this together he is now creating what I am calling is the 
electron flooded core. Boom, that's it, right there, that's quantum. Now, it will stay attached to that unless you shoot more negatives in and you start pushing it and shaking it and heating it and all that. Because when you heat something, you're doing nothing more than adding more electrons. You are shoving electrons in and they are trying to fight with the electrons there. That is the only thing there is to heat, is you're forcing electrons in. And the only thing there is to cold is forcing electrons out. Now, that as soon as it gets out of there, that will become light. It's heat now and when it goes away, way it is being shaken so hard it turned into light that is the nature of of light all right so i'm just going to leave it at this it's as simple as that that's how hydrogen really works whoops <laughs> magnets all over that is how hydrogen really works that's the core that big thing that had the brass ring and the extra negatives one extra negative, you see, 919 instead of 918, and that made that little, same as this one, come in and say, I want to get in. I said, no, you can't. You cannot get in here. I have one extra already. You, I'll, I'll hold you tight, but I won't let you go. <laughs> I'll hold on loosely, but won't let go. What it is, it's, it's the attraction to this positive set and the repulsion by the negative set. That's what base, that's what hydrogen is. Well, that's all. Okay, the next thing we're going to go into is quarks, because quarks are made up of these same sort of particles. And they turn into the red, blue, and the green, and I'm going to show all that. It's, and I can, I can show these things. I'm going to show you right now why I say the most basic particle is two of these together. Alright, because I can show you that in light. All right, here's my evidence why I say that light is a photon of an up and a down particle. Now, that's the up particle. There's a positive here and a negative here. And there's the down particle. There's a negative here and a positive here. That is a light particle. That came from accelerated light that came through the Venturi. And as it settles, it shows this. I have them in green as well. Now, the that appears to me to be a photon. Now, that is a red photon because that came out of a red laser. So we're going to be going into the quarks. This is the quarks and we got the red, the green, and the blue, and we're going to go through the sizes and the spins and all that business. So that's coming up next. That's, uh, I'm going to have a whole series going through all the particles, what they do, how they react, we're going to go all through every different experiment that says they I, it disproves this, this proves this. Well, I'm saying a lot of those things don't prove what they're saying they prove. We're going to look at them. We'll look at them very closely. But I can tell you one thing right now. You can accelerate light, and that is absolutely no question whatsoever. That is accelerated light right there. That right there was a red laser disc, of a red laser light right here. And then as it was sucked through the venturi, it accelerated. And as it accelerated, it created plasma. And when it created plasma, it, cre it, it creates chaos, absolute chaos. That is plasma. Now, if you can create that plasma with heavy particles instead of these light particles, you see there's a particle stream. There's no question they're particles. Now, these are... I say these are the same particle CERN's working with, only they're working with them in the proton range of 1,836 times. Well, they're not quite that, but 918 times bigger than this. Right? They're working with something, and then four times that. So they're working with like 3,600 times bigger than the particles I'm working with. If they could crash those into the same sort of venturi and get that plasma out the other side, I don't see why they shouldn't be able to create cold fusion because you don't have to add anything extra to get that venturi to do what it's doing and that is a particle crusher i don't care what anybody says that is a particle crusher that is crushing particles together that's all it does and it, it, instead of bashing them head on we're crushing them into each other to force them through a restriction no difference than what cern's doing only they're hitting them head on we are getting the identical same patterns they get too those are higgs fields we get those coming out of the accelerator after they leave the accelerator and crash into standard space. 
Okay, remember the patterns I have here. This is the white cherry and cough radiation, and these are what I'm calling the Higgs fields. The little white particles that are streaming out of here are the bosons. They're charged particles, and they carry a spinning polar field with them that manifests itself when it crashes into the unrestricted space. I'm sure you see the similarity. These are the Higgs bosons that CERN is looking for. They're crashing the same thing we did, only we're crushing them together. They're slamming them head on. These are much, much, much heavier than the ones we're working with, but they're the same patterns. And I believe they're the same particles when you get down to what they're constructed of, because that's what they're looking for, the construction of them. That's what I'm showing in these light, light uh, particle experiments. All right, as I said, CERN is working with the muon neutrinos, extremely heavy particles. But they're the same Higgs fields they create after Cherenkov radiation, and they crash. Ours are the electrons, and they come through a very high speed. They've been accelerated. I showed that. They smash just like they're smashing into glass, only it is atmosphere. The shower goes everywhere, as you saw, and you have these electron neutrino showers, which CERN says they cannot see. I say they're easy to see, and you don't need any special equipment. So, we're going to go into the the rest of the physics and all of the story about matter, atomic reactions, about the double slit experiment. Light is a spinning particle. It's not a wave. It's a spinning particle. And when it spins through those slits, the spin spins it off sometimes to the right, sometimes to the left, sometimes straight through the middle. That's what creates interference patterns. Now, I know I'm making a lot of claims, but I have a lot of evidence to support every single syllable that I utter. That is light screwing through a Venturi slit. Just like a drill bit head. As it comes through, it dives down, and you can see this, because this is behind the wall of the slit. The slit is way up here, so we're getting the light through. It spins through, it hits the wall here, and then it dives through the slit and spins back. Same thing here, it hits the wall, dives through the slit, and, and, and comes and shows up in the back. And depending upon where it's hitting, you see these different waves? Those are those different particles simple as that. That's a single slit. And when this is the last statement, this is a spinning particle of light spinning to the right, drifting to the left, expanded at the bottom after it left the Venturi accelerator, compressing as it enters unrestricted space. Shortly the Higgs will appear as the polar particles spin around it as it spins through them. All right, stay tuned. We're going to hit this whole thing. I got whiteboards coming out of my ears. <laughs> I use these little whiteboards. They work nice. All right, so stay tuned with me. You know, this is this is serious stuff. Somebody should take a look at this because it really has a big impact on physics. You know, if I'm right, and it appears from everything I'm showing you, I think I'm pretty well on the way of being correct here. Now, I might have a little of this, a little of that, but I think I'm pretty close right now. I'd like to have some engagement with somebody that has the ability to test some of these things that I'm saying. Because I, I, could, I have a, a whole variety of experiments that I can set up to, to demonstrate the things that I'm talking about and to prove them, but I don't have the ability to do that. So I'm hoping for somebody to reach out, and I've made a lot of attempts, and I'm going to continue to try making attempts. All right? And I hope somebody will you know, kick back at me and we can we can get into this a little bit and see if it has any any meaning to it. And if it does, it's got, got a lot of meaning. Because if we could create fusion, man, that's it. That's, <laughs> it doesn't get any better than that. Anyway, Mud Fossil University doing a lot of different research, a lot of different areas. And if you don't like the research I do in one area, just leave me alone there. That's all. And if you like the research in that area, that's fine. So, stay tuned. All right, here's the problem with physics today. Moving very fast. They seem to be going away from us faster than the speed of light. But nothing travels faster than light. You just can't send physical objects.
objects or even information faster than the speed of light. It, this is the problem. We're stuck in Einsteinian thought patterns, which is not correct. I just showed you can exceed the speed of light. So I'm, I'm getting into the particle physics of this and the isotopes and all that stuff. Electron volts, what it requires to jump, what the frequencies are, the different angstrom units, it all makes sense. It's all based on mass. And all of these particles are t tiny little particles. They're tiny. When you smash them into little bitty bits and force them into each other, you can make them combine for an instant, for a yakto second. That's what they're doing. They say, oh, these things exist. For, well, they're not going to exist there unless you do this spectacular event to force them to do that, and then they want to get away from each other. It is the nature of electro uh, magnetism to do the things that I am showing. It's just it's as simple as that. All right, stay tuned.